Mexico 1986. Robson's England, hoping to land the World Cup for the first time since 1966. Coming to a World Cup, it's high expectations. And you've got Brian Robson and Ray Wilkins and, and Glenn Hoddle, Peter Shilton, so some great players. So I think we always feel we'll be, you know, quarterfinals at, at the least. On June the 3rd in Monterey, the stage was set for England to join the party. It's Robson! But things didn't quite go according to plan. England lost their first game to Portugal, 1-0. Diamantino looking to make a breakthrough here for Portugal. And the goal, Carlos Manuel. Three days later, England were back in action and desperate to kickstart their campaign. To lose the first game was a real problem. I think we felt after that game that you know Morocco would at least give us some respite, um, but it got worse. And Robson goes down. I'm sure back home everyone is holding their breath. A serious shoulder injury meant Captain Brian Robson's World Cup was over. But England's problems were just beginning. Ray Wilkins has been sent off. His second bookable offence, and it's problems upon problems for England. Hmm. Ray just lost the plot a little bit and suddenly found himself walking off the first England player to be sent off in the World Cup finals. Suddenly, yeah, England were looking down the barrel of uh, a lot of problems. The match finished nil-nil. After two games, England's dreams were in tatters. First two games, he hadn't scored. We got one point from six. We'd lost our skipper with a shoulder injury. We'd lost the vice-captain being sent off. It was a, a disaster. So the moment of truth has arrived for Bobby Robson's England. Against Poland, there was a massive pressure to get a result. It was huge. Bobby knew that his reputation was on the line. A lot of the players' reputations were on the line. England really need victory. A draw is enough for Poland. He went to it thinking England were going to go out, really. With the stakes so high, the team needed a hero. Step forward, Gary Lineker. Lineker! The World Cup campaign at last is on the move. After getting off the mark, suddenly everything Lineker touched turned to Aztec gold. Lineker! Brilliant! Just half an hour into the game, a Lineker hat-trick gave England a 3-0 lead and the cue for fans to get the party started. Winarczyk has misjudged it and Lineker has a hat-trick! All the England fans doing the conga around the ground. It was just a fantastic thing. And I remember Boniek, the um, great Polish striker, saying to me, please, please let me have one goal. I was like, on your bike, Boniek, no chance. You're not getting anything from us. Our World Cup hopes are revived. The focal point, Gary Lineker's hat-trick. From almost sinking without a trace, England were now sailing through to the next round and it was all inspired by a Scottish rock band. We had a big boombox, Simple Minds Alive and Kicking, was the record that was playing, and that became our theme, really, Alive and Kicking in the tournament. We had to win, uh, and we did. Through to the knockout stages, England were now on the march. A place in the quarterfinals at stake. Standing in their way were Paraguay, but the South Americans were about to meet a team with no shortage of confidence. This England team were on a bit of a roll and, and Paraguay felt the force of that. And it was Lineker and Beardsley just clicking into gear. England's two forwards ripped the South Americans apart. And Beardsley! Two nil! And here's Lineker, onside, three nil! Lineker and Beardsley had combined for the perfect victory. But it now meant England were on a collision course to face one of the world's greatest sides. The optimism was rising, but Argentina were on the horizon. England prepared for their next game, knowing they would play a team captained by the tournament's star player, Diego Maradona. You know you've drawn Argentina, and you know they're, they're decent, and you know they've got a genius in their team. If the genius of Maradona wasn't enough to contend with, the England players also had to handle the pressure of playing Argentina for the first time since the Falklands War. Four years after the war, 
this was a game with real edge. Largely because of the way it was being portrayed in some of the tabloid newspapers, it was in many ways a kind of extension of the conflict. But for the England squad, world politics took a back seat at the World Cup. It didn't affect us as such. We were on the verge of a World Cup semi-final against Belgium. And with all due respect, you would fancy beating Belgium in a semi-final. So we, for me, we were playing for a place in the World Cup final really that day. On June the 22nd in Mexico City's Azteca Stadium, a crowd of 115,000 watched England face Argentina in the quarter-final of the World Cup. Away we go. It was the 51st minute when the game finally burst into life. And when it did, it was with one of the most controversial incidents in the history of football. And Maradona picks away through where there seemed to be none. Stevie Hodge was the one, I think, that played it back to, to Peter Shilton, and all Peter had to do was just, just catch it. There was no doubt in my mind when the ball was flicked back, exactly as I wanted to flick it back, that there was no problem. As I turned around, I just saw a clash and then the ball in the back of the net. England claimed that it was put in with the hand, and Shilton is so incensed that he's come all the way to argue with the referee. By Shilton's standards, he was obviously very upset, and so I picked up my cue from that, really. And Maradona handled it in. In a World Cup, these kind of things shouldn't happen. It's not nice to be cheated out of, a, out, of a, out of a goal. With the England player still dazed by Maradona's first effort, four minutes later, he produced yet another iconic moment. And he's hurting England again here. It's a brilliant run. It's one of the World Cup great goals. And there's no doubt about that one. Absolutely pure football brilliance. As an Englishman, painful but as a commentator, you were very pleased to be holding the microphone at that time for a, a truly great World Cup moment. This one will be remembered for a long, long time for vastly different reasons to the first. That great goal, best goal in World Cup history, you know, people say that and, you know, it probably is, but for me it's the worst goal in World Cup history because I was the only English player he beat twice that day. Terry Butcher trying to make up the ground, the tackle got a toe to it. People ask me to this day, did you get a touch? I said, oh, yes, I would love to have got a touch and scored the greatest own goal in World Cup history and deprive that little cheating twit of all the glory. But unfortunately, I never did. So uh, he, has, he has all the fame and the kudos, and all I've got left with is a bad memory. But even trailing 2-0, England's Lions refused to lie down. Now Barnes with his first real run. And Lineker! England responded with the sixth World Cup goal for Gary Lineker. And just a few minutes later, the tournament's leading scorer was given the chance to grab an equaliser. He's got the better of Enrique. Goal! Lineker was inches away. He was that much away? I mean, that must keep Gary awake at nights even now, thinking how close that was. Seconds after Lineker's near miss, the final whistle blew. Argentina had won the game 2-1. England were out of the World Cup. Diego Maradona really has sent England home. For Steve Hodge, the end of the match gave him the chance to grab a unique souvenir from the Argentinian captain. At the end of the game, final whistle goes and it's in mayhem everywhere. We made eye contact and just tugged on my shirt to say, any chance of your shirt? And over he came, took it off. The shirt is now so valuable, it's kept in the National Football Museum. Owning the shirt now is a bittersweet memory. It's nice to have it, but uh, you know, when I look back now, it was obviously a huge game, and uh, on the day we got cheated. Terry Butcher also went looking for Maradona, but swapping shirts was the last thing he had in mind. Signal to him, I said, head or hand. And obviously, talking about that goal, and he went head. So I was like, Phew. I'll never forgive him. I'm still very bitter about it. People say, get over it and let it go, but when you're there, yeah, I'll never, I'll, I'll never let it go. It's a kind of magic. With England defeated, the rest of the tournament would belong to Diego Maradona. Had we seen the replays, I would have been straight over to him and I'd probably had him round the throat <laughs> because he cheated us out of a goal. One day we'll get over it, not for another 50 years, I'll probably. He's a national hero in Scotland, but there we are.